for my life. Most of you don't want to say it, but you grew up with three, four of you sleeping on one bed in one little room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of you, do, you, you don't want to talk about it. You're ashamed of that. Yeah, most of us grew up with uh, two, three of you sleeping, you know, in, 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 in one room. We, we, we did a lot of real weird stuff, and we never thought. We never get deranged. We were stable and focused. We knew what we want. Somebody give God a praise. When I was growing up, I didn't hear of a lot of suicide. No, you don't hear a lot of that. When a man commits suicide, it's a crazy man on the countryside, just lose everything and he just commits suicide. That was real. Today, it's a common talk. And, and, and I just wonder why they didn't just kill themselves and leave other folk alone. You know, and I, I, I'm saying to you, saints, that a lot of us as parents, we take a lot of things for granted, but for that young man to have access to guns, which his parents leave carelessly, that he could go and have access to guns to kill the parent and kill everybody around him. So things that we tell you to lay aside, it's going to turn around and kill you. And it's hard to say, you know, one of the sad things I was reading and going through the book of Deuteronomy, and when Moses reminded the children of Israel and warned the children of Israel that our imperative it is to keep the commandment of God, and he said in Deuteronomy 28, if you do it, this is the blessing that shall flow upon you. And when you release that in your spirit, praise God, at the ending, coming down to the end of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses said, I know you're going to go astray. The Lord said, you're all going to serve and worship false gods. And you're going to go into bondage and you're going to take your kids and take everything and kill you because you will not listen to the voice of the Lord. Most of us sit back and we look at it and we say, well, uh, that's him, newborn, Connecticut. It didn't happen in my city. That's in Sandy Hook. It all come to Mr. Shaka. But if we continue to ignore the Lord, it will walk right into your city. And you never know until it walks right into your house when you got to walk to a school or a workplace and you're uncertain whether the people you have there are alive or not. But the Lord promises healing. The Lord says in 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their lands and I will forgive their sins. There is hope. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody give God a praise. There is hope. But our people that will turn. Poverty can be a thing of the past. But there's some of us who are determined to live in sin. And I know it's a fight. I know it's a struggle. You think I don't know? Why I preach this hard, it's not because I, 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 am, I am invincible. It's not because the enemy doesn't attack me. It's because I know that we need to knit together as a people and fight that trap of the enemy. Arrow somebody. Oh God, I can I can immediately sense what it felt like in the room when a gunman walk up to you and you know he has a gun that's loaded. I want you to picture the principal trembling. I, I'm not sure of the questions that she was asked, but I, I can begin to sense how she felt when she saw the gun knowing what's happening over the schools and when that young man lifted that gun, I can imagine what she felt. And it was too late if she was not saved. It's, it's too late if she was never baptized 
in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost. It will be too late if she had not received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Because to die is gain if you're in Christ. To die is a blessing if you're in Christ. But if you're not saved and you die, you know the, the wages after death comes the judgment. Oh yes, if I die now, it's okay, it's okay. If a government walks in and point a gun and shoot Bishop Johnson to death, it's okay. The body is gone back to the earth. But my soul is gone up to God. It, it's too late if when the gun is pointed to your face, that's when you want to see God. Because remember this, it's not just saying you love God. It's about repentance, baptism, and receiving the Holy Ghost. If you get killed, even though you said, Lord, I say, I love you, forgive my sins, and you did not have the Holy Ghost, hell is still your portion. It's a serious thing. Our world is in serious condition. But I want to let you know, we're not here to bring all bad news today. God is good. Amen. God is good. Oh, y'all don't know that. All your Canadian Christians don't know nothing about that. God is good all the time. All the time. Oh, amen. Y'all just catching on. Amen. Canadian is, Canada is too far north. Y'all getting in unto this. But God is good all the time. Give the Lord a hand clap and a praise all over this place. Amen. Talk to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor it's a blessing to be alive. Neighbor's hand and said, Neighbor, <laughs> y'all don't know what it is when you walk into when you walk into an hospital room and the doctor comes back and tells you you have terminal cancer and you're gonna die. When the doctor comes back and tells you uh, the person you brought in won't make it, they're gonna die, and that's when you start to mourn. But today that I'm standing on top of my grave, today that I'm alive. I want to give God some praise up in here. It's good to be alive. It's good to be on the top of my grave. It's good to have a praise. It's good to have a shout. Give God a praise up in here. God is good. I bring you greetings from Bishop Lawson. Amen. I bring you greetings from Pastor Hills. I bring you greetings from Overseer Allen. I know you're wanting all of these people all who all these people are, but they're your own people in the Church of Jesus Christ. Praise God, they send you greeting, Bishop Barnes, amen, all of these folks sending the church greetings, praise God. I want you to know we are a big body, it's only a matter of time, pray for Bishop Johnson. We are bringing a great work together. Somebody shout glory. glory. Let me hear you shout glory. glory. Amen, God wanted to speak to us this morning on the power of sanctification because we've been talking about winning in this fight. I'm not going to be able to preach this this morning because I need time to get into the word of God to deal with you. Amen. To let you know that your sanctification is progressive. Understanding progressive sanctification is the means whereby you're going to be able, praise God, to overcome the enemy and to win in this fight. Do I hear a praise in Ah, uh, yes, when you understand that the different levels of sanctification, which is your positional sanctification, your, amen, your uh, progressive sanctification, and your ultimate sanctification, the moment you've been born again, the moment you've been saved, praise God, you're Jesus Christ, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're positionally sanctified, because the Bible declares as far as the east is from the west, so far have he removed your sins from you. The moment you've confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you have been repentant of your sins, I'm not talking about just a word of mouth, but you know deep within you that you are sorry for your state and condition, and you have repented. Praise God, immediately I can guarantee you that the Bible declares as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed your sins from you. 
what then happens is that after you're positionally sanctified, you are going to be progressively sanctified. A process whereby you take what we are positionally and what we will be ultimately and progressively making it a reality in our lives. That's why Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 5, starting in verse 5, he says, we must diligently, amen, seek, amen, after this progression, praise God, in holiness and sanctification. It's not just good to talk about holiness and sanctification, but it's important to understand that it's a process. So the, uh, Paul Peter says in 2 Peter 2 and verse number, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 5, he said, beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. He says in verse number eight, for if these things be in you and abound in the, when you speak of the word abound, it's plentiful, it's it's in abundance. You have these virtues dwelling in you. He said, and abound, they shall make you that ye shall neither be barren. Tell your neighbor, I'm not barren. Amen. No unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know, loved ones, that God is mindful of you. The Bible says it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And therefore, the job of me as a leader to understand, as the Lord said, except he build the house, the workmen labor in vain the building. He said, except the Lord watch the city, the watchmen waited in vain. I wish I could preach today. Ah, uh, but God wanted just to consecrate you to another level. But the Lord wants you to know that he's mindful of you. And that this fight that you're fighting, you're not alone in this battle. The Lord wants you to know that the battle really is not yours. It is the Lord's. All the Lord wants you to do is say, cast your cares upon me. Ah, uh, because I care for you, he said, he that had began a good work in you. It's the Lord that's doing the job of sanctification in you. Your requirement, praise God, is to let loose to the Holy Ghost. I do I have two or three weakness because I won't be not here. Hallelujah, all the Lord wants is some folk who understand the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And if you release yourself to the power and to the anointing of the Holy Ghost, your sanctification is guaranteed. Your sanctification is not about your righteousness. Because a lot of folk think they're righteous, but the Lord declared that your righteousness before him is as filthy rags. I don't want you to be one of those church folk who believe because you know how to do rituals and ceremonies and because you can come to church early and be a part of everything that's happening in church that you believe you are saved and ready for heaven. No, you're not ready yet because you've got to understand that the work of salvation can only be done by God. Therefore, my action in church, it's about Christ working in me. My action in church should be not because I want to be noticed, because a lot of folks do things to be noticed. They want to be heard and they want to be seen. I got to let you know all of that stuff won't get you to heaven. What's going to get you to heaven is if I lay aside the weight and the sins that don't so easily beset me. I'm going to get sanctified is when I lay aside my body and lay aside my will. As I heard the song rather says, just as I have 
without what please. I feel my help coming into this place. I block every attack of the enemy. And that's thy blood was shed for me. I've got to let somebody know the Lord is writing up to you. The Lord got a message up here for you. He said to the young people, he said, young man, I write up to you. And because you are strong, I want to back up a little while and tell you that you can't be saved and you can't be sanctified. And when John was writing in 1 John 2, 12 to 14, I heard John says, I write up to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write up to you, fathers, because you know him that is from the beginning. He said, I write up to you, young men, because you have overcome the, the wicked one. I write up to you, fathers, or little children, because you know the Father. I write up to you, fathers, because you know him that is from the beginning. I have written up to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abided in you. And he have overcome the wicked one. God got a word for you. God wants you to know you're not alone. And that the battle is not yours. That you can overcome the attack on the wicked one. I wish somebody would praise him with me. The Lord wants you to know that the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. All you got to do is to subject your flesh and to subject your will. And so just as I am, I know I'm weak. A lot of things are messing with my sanctification. But here I am. Here I am. I give up myself to thee. Oh Lord, have mercy. But somebody got a shout of praise from right where you are. And tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm going to make it. Though the battle may be hard and the conflict sore, the rock in the road that I travel along, hold on a little while longer. Take Jesus at his word. He will carry you through. Right through to the promised land. Because I do matter how the battle is hard. I heard the sound of shame. Yea, though I walk, shall be over dark to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art to me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Then the word of came to me and pat me on the shoulder and said, Johnson, if God is for you, who can be against you? Because my mind is made up and I won't turn back. I've got my mind made up. Somebody shot a praise and said, I'm going through. I stopped your neighbor and said, neighbor, you're not alone. We're in this fight together. Say, neighbor, we're going to make it true. Though the battle may be hard, but I call for somebody up in Zion. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound of alarm at my holy mountain. So now your neighborhood, get in your vehicle. Drive around with your shot. Jesus Christ, say, devil, we're gonna win. Shut the battle fire. We're gonna win in this fight. The battle is hard. The conflict is sore. But when God is with you, when Christ is the vessel, shut the mouth. We know what shut up. When Christ is the vessel, I'm gonna smile, smile, smile. I'm gonna smile at the storm. I'm not going back. Shout a praise, shout a praise, shout a praise, shout a praise. And those who 
are in mourning, those who are in lamentation, I will have the right of sins. I will not have you be ignorant concerning those. I cannot comfort somebody who are asleep in Christ. For the Lord himself shall be saved from the other with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God. For the dead in Christ shall rise first, that we who are alive and remain in Christ unto the coming of the great and notable day. He shall be shouting, God. Cry out while you're going down. Cry out while you're going down. 
he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. If you not begin or begun your race, when you come, let's get started. Let's get started. You can do it. For in my hope was in this life only, I will be as man most miserable. But thank God I've got a hope that is steadfast and sure. Fast to the rock. You cannot move. Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Are you ready to come? If you're not here to start, come. If you're feeling weak, halting between two opinions, so far, the devil said, don't bother with it. Lift your hands above your head and right now begin to worship. 